Thanks for stopping by. This is Dan Bell of Bell Certified. Today we're speaking about MPEP 706.02F1. There's nine examples there that we're covering and we're looking at how um, uh, 35 USC 102E1 and 2 are applied under both the new and the old versions of 102E. Um, so uh, in this example, uh, you can see we have, this is the first example, we have a, um, notice all the examples will have this date here, which is a date that's uh, relevant for international applications. Um, and um, uh, so this is, a, this is a date that's uh, relevant for international applications, which are PCT applications and it's the date that determines whether uh, the we apply the old or the new version um, of 102E and in this case it looks like we have a US filing a 111A filing is just a um, is the legal statute that um, you can file a, a patent application for in the US that's the um, it's called a 111A or non-provisional patent application. In this case, uh, there's another type of patent application in the U.S., uh, which is a 111B, uh, which is called a provisional. That's uh, likely some of these other examples we'll also talk about. The difference between a, uh, a 111A uh, non-provisional is it's required to have claims and certain more formalistic uh, requirements. Um, and um, the uh, I don't know what that little box is there goes, and a and a 111B is a provisional application it is it can it has almost no formal requirements at all, um, and um, it mainly is a placeholder. Uh, you f you file it as a, a a U.S. patent application and and it, it allows you to uh, go back and get that date for various reasons for support. So. Um, one example reason people file a 111B or provisional application is when they're uh, they are they want to disclose one of their ideas and they want to get an application on file before they disclose it, and that'll allow them to maintain their uh, foreign rights. So if they want to, uh, many of the, most of the c countries in the world require complete secrecy until uh, a patent application is filed, and so by having this uh, application on file. They would preserve the right to um, uh, to later uh, file a a one eleven a application and claim priority and and uh, and keep your foreign rights. Uh, so that's the main idea between one eleven b. Although there's other strategic reasons that they're also used. But so those are the two types of U.S. applications that that you'll find us speaking about here. So in this example, you have a U.S. filing date. It's a U.S. patent application of uh, December eighth, two thousand, and you have a um, a publication and you have a granted patent. Okay, the word publication always should, after your study of 102A, should always make you think, hey, I got a 102A date there. Any, anything that becomes accessible it has a 102A uh, date. Now, today we're talking about 102E, and so uh, I'm only mentioning this in passing. This publication has a, 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 a 102A date. As of the date, it becomes accessible, as does this granted patent. Uh, granted patents are accessible also. And of course, they're effective as the date they become accessible. So as prior art, they're effective on this date. Now, the benefit of 102E is that you can you can get back to the filing date, right? So long as it's a US application or a PCT application, a PCT application fulfilling certain requirements. So here we have a, uh, since um, there's no international uh, filing at all in these facts, therefore we always use the new the new 102E. And uh, under the new 102E, this is a 102E one date. Publications are E1 dates and patents are E2 dates. And so in addition to being A and B uh, prior art on the date they became accessible, with respect to 102E, you can get back to the filing date. So this, this, uh, although this is the event that causes it, this is the date you're entitled to, December 8, 2002. And that seems to be um, played out in these facts. You have down here it says uh, the 102E date for the publication is December 8th as we said and, and as well as it is for the patent. 
So let's look down, and that's a, the typical application of 102E. You're entitled to the earlier filing date as a. Now, it's worth pointing out quickly. We're talking about as prior art references today, right? We're going to be using these as prior art references, and that's uh, uh, what we're discussing today, as opposed to um, what date up, um, someone's entitled to when they, uh, if they're the applicant. The, we'll discuss that more thoroughly when we get to the 102B discussion in the coming weeks. And we've discussed that somewhat already in, 102, in the 102A discussions. So here's the uh, second example here. Let's see here. We have a, um, they're saying it could be a provisional or a non-provisional uh, filing date here. So we, now, now that's a U.S. filing date. So if we have a, a publication or an issuance resulting from this, we'll be able to get back to this date, assuming, uh, um, uh, you know, that there's support. Um, let's see here. Oops. Let's look here. Now we have another, we have a second application that's claiming benefit of the, of the earlier one. So this one is uh, claiming benefit to the earlier application and it's it's also a US filing date so we can get back to here once we have an event. Oh here's our first event. We have a publication of this second application claiming benefit to the first. Um, here's the first application. So this publication now uh, is a again sorry I'm gonna keep saying this it's a 102A event and it's a 102B event because it's it's accessible and boom this this granted patent is also so so in addition to being prior on this date that they became accessible we can get back to earlier dates under 102E um, a publications uh, a publication of a US filing is uh, you can get back to the filing date and uh, of that and the, so that's the effective date, January 1st, 2001. But in this case, you also have a priority claim to an earlier filed U.S. application. Now, if you have 112 support, you can get back to this earlier date. Uh, 112 support means that, um, um, and, you know, since we're talking about references, um, the idea is that we found a reference. When we searched, <coughs> we found this publication or this patent, right? We were searching for certain, uh, with we maybe we were keyword searching or searching on classifications, and what came up was this patent or this publication, and it had the words in it, uh, which I call the it had the invalidating language that we needed in order to invalidate the target patent. Uh, the target patent is not shown in these facts, right? Right now, we're just talking about the references that we're going to use to try to invalidate that target patent. And we found the language we needed to invalidate, say it's claim one we're working on presently, and it's in this patent. And so we check and say, dang, uh, this publication, it was 102A date, it's not early enough. But then we check and we realize, hey, I can get back to this filing date. And it looks like, oh, I verified support. I can get back to this filing date. And so uh, I can get back to, you know, um, far enough behind this uh, target date to beat its invention date, which is what we need under 102E. Uh, we have to be before the invention day of that claim one. And so that's that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the use of these 102 E dates as references. And so um, if there's support, we'd, we'd expect that this January 1st, 2000 date would be it for the publication and for the patent. And that's what they're saying here. That makes sense. Uh, let's go to the... Uh, did we skip the second example? Oh no, this is the third example here. Here it is. Let's see what we have. Um, oh, there it goes. These, uh, <laughs> these, some of these take a minute. Um, you know what I think I'll do is I'll I'll pause pause quickly here and um, come back and um, do uh, example three and four. Uh, chat with you in a minute. It'll be on a different video though.